Um, the question is, Jack Grealish fitting in to, to City. Yeah. Where will he fit in? I know earlier on, go on, remind us, Trevor, of the, of, of the options that I mean, Pep Guardiola has in that sort of I, forward line. I'm just say. a fan and I'm looking at the names and I'm bamboozled because these seven, eight, nine players yeah. have only got four positions on the pitch. You've got Phil Foden, obviously Jack, Raheem Sterling. You've got the boy Adozi who scored last yeah. night against Blackpool, scored in the last three friendlies, up and coming. Ferran Torres, Zinchenko can play on that left-hand side. Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva and Mares. Yeah. And then you've got one striker, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, look, I think... Look, Jack's been in a fixed position for Villa, which has mainly been the left side. Um, and I think you can make the same argument with England, with Gareth. I think he's only selected or wanted to select Jack Grealish is in the left side of the pitch. He's played right once or twice, oh, hasn't on the, he? And it's been on the yeah. odd occasion. Yeah. With City, it's gonna he's going to have to be more versatile because, you know, like Mahrez, you mentioned, so, uh, you know, players now, but think of wide men that Bernardo Silva, who was an absolute star for them, Gets left out at times. Yeah. Mares found it hard to get into the team. Got in the team, was brilliant. Sterling has found himself in the team, done fantastic well. Then been out the side. Sane left the football club because of that. You know, he couldn't... I think it's a really big ask to be a wide man at Man City because Pep loves Not them. Not for everyone. <laughs> but you don't... You know, like, you know De Bruyne is going to play nearly all the games when fit. Yeah. With a wide man, you're guessing, and I haven't even touched on Foden, you know, you're, you're guessing who are the wide men are going to be. And I think Jack's going to have to prove he has to be more versatile than just being the left-sided attacking midfielder. Well, Wayne, not... Wayne asked the question, actually, Trevor. Is, is Grealish better than the players you've already t mentioned in, in that City squad? It, you know, what is he adding to that City squad that they don't already have? Well, I, I would say, if you, look, if you look at his main rival in that position, would be Raheem Sterling. Raheem's quicker, without a doubt. He's not as good technically as Jack, which obviously Pep loves a gifted player with the ball at his feet. Um, I There isn't a... Look, we're talking really fine margins here of players. I think him being left out, Raheem, at the end of the season was a big tell that maybe Pep's thinking of a way forward on the left side, a different type of wide man. Can he play the the, the centre-forward role? You know, be the false nine? Can he play number 10? I don't know. Um, can he play on the right side at times? Uh, there, I think he has to prove he has to be so much more versatile for City. That's what's required from the manager. Well, they're stacked out in that position. I think when you look at Raheem, it's been very quiet over the summer. There was an initial early talk about him potentially being used as a, a make weight for the Harry Kane deal, but it's been very quiet. And I'm, I'm just not sure with the, the, the way that the back end of the season panned out that maybe there could be a surprise there with Raheem. So I might be way off the mark, but there may be. One thing we've not touched on, Natalie and Cass, mm. is the financial fair play. Now, we're talking about Manchester City spending 100 million on one player. They could potentially spend another 120, 130. I don't know what Manchester City's thinking is with this Harry Kane deal. But is this a, not a little bit of financial fair play opportunism? Because it's been frozen out, hasn't it? And if you're going to spend over the odds in mm. any season... Why wouldn't if you've got the funds available? Why wouldn't you do it now while financial fair play is not relevant? Well, they have spent more than two hundred thousand or two hundred million pounds before. They have done that, but they've bought four or five players. Mm -hmm. Now their revenue has jumped. If you look at their revenue over the last three or four years, it's jumped enormously. They're fifth or sixth in yeah. the world rankings. Yeah. So they now are in a position to spend more than they have in the past. So I think they know they are within the rules. I think that is what is happening at football clubs more often than not now, that they are in the guidelines. This is where we can go. How we do these deals might be slightly different, but we will do it. Uh, we will make it. We won't be punished because they have been punished, haven't they? So uh, I, I think... I think they're trying to do it the right way, but it's only going to be on two players. I don't see any more with City. I only see, if at best, two big deals. And this is the one they're pursuing. This is one of them. It's interesting that Grealish was before Kane. Mm. That's the, the thing that gets me as well. Did they put more, not saying more, on getting the Grealish one over the line quicker, but maybe it was more easy to yes. negotiate. Availability. Yeah, yeah availability. Because he's, he's only just got back from Bahamas, hasn't he, Harry? Well, this is this is the speculation that everyone's discussing, isn't it? That that maybe that is why Harry Kane has taken this. Draw my line. Go, is he on. turning into dirty Harry? Oh, you remember the film? Yeah, I do. I know Clint the one you Eastwood. mean. Of course. How many bullets in the chamber? 
he's got one big bullet against him, and that's the Daniel Levy one, where does he let him go? But I feel that Harry's in a very powerful position. A lot of people telling me that he's got he's under contract. You know, Trevor, you've been at yeah. football clubs, that when a main player wants to get out, it's very hard to stop that transfer. I think the trouble and the, and the worry for Tottenham fans is that this is not a one-off occasion. When you look at Luka Modric in 2011, mm. he went, he, I say went on strike, he went missing. When you look at Gareth Bale, refused to play. When you look at Berbatov. So surely it can't be all them players and Harry Kane. Well, what's the common thing? That, exactly. Daniel it's Levy. not the players. It's different players. It's the same director of football or head mm. of the football club. But it doesn't so, just happen at, at Spurs. It happens everywhere. We, I mean, I've had it at Brentford mm, where a player. Very rare. I've had it where we've had it at Brentford where a player refused to play because he felt his head was turned by a, a move to mm. to Burnley. Oh, it's it happened at many different clubs, of course. Yeah. But it, it, when my, someone's in such a powerful position, and the England captain, it's, yeah, it's just it's, the, the, it's slightly... of course, of course, and and I think that's why people are coming out with this is the stance that Harry ta- Harry Kane has taken because he may have got wind that the Jack Grealish transfer was moving a lot quicker than his was, and maybe that's why we're in this mm. this um, saga that is now turning into with Harry Kane. Um, let me ask you very quickly, Cass, about Jack Grealish. Then he's going to be working with Pep Guardiola, obviously mm. one of the best managers, if not the best manager in world football right now. What's the potential you think? I know you talked about maybe he has to have become more versatile, Jack Grealish, but what is his potential? What do you think Pep Guardiola can bring out of him to achieve with Jack Grealish? Well, the two things that stand out for me is can he be better without the ball? Because Pep's wide men are exceptional without the ball. So he's going to have to improve in that de- department. And I think being more versatile of playing different positions. Because Jack has really played mainly in his career, certainly Villa and England, as a left-sided winger come midfielder. And I think that is his big challenge because Pep will demand that. And there is more in Jack. Just There is a part of me, because I played at the football club, you know, Villa have made big moves to try and be a much bigger club. And I look, I walked into that, that football club and looked at the the photos on the walls and saw teams that won European championships and thinking, what a great club this is. But big clubs, look at the photographs, they're always changing. Year in, year out, if you're a big club, some of them people there two years down the line will be long gone. Something we discussed earlier Mm. on about the the legendary status of of players may change because we're not going to have one club. Men, men anymore, really. That's not going to happen so much anymore in football, unfortunately. But we do have to take another break, unfortunately. And no, Trevor, you're, you're itching to say more because there is so much more for us to discuss, to discuss on this. Cass, I know you've got a busy day, so we're going to let you go. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.